Hello everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Ben Roy. Hello there. Mr. Ben Roy Turner, it is a good time because there's three new Star Wars games finally officially confirmed, one of them being rumored for many, many months and two brand new things as well, all coming from Respawn, both uh, two in the developer capacity and one publishing. And um, to break this stuff down, uh, the first one is Jedi Fallen Order sequel, something that was rumored for months across the rest, or the last uh, last year across 2021. And um, the other game is an all new Star Wars first person shooter. It was, Respawn for, uh, it was rumored for a while that Respawn were working on some sort of FPS. Um, and the third one is, well, what I'm most excited about, um, which is a new game, a new studio uh, headed up by Bit Reactor, which is a new team uh, led by an art director that was on XCOM Enemy Unknown and XCOM 2 uh, called Greg Forch, and that'll be a strategy game. So assumedly it's going to be a more XCOM style thing. Um, so we can break all three of these things down, but what do you think of new Star Wars stuff? I'm excited for all of these for <laughs> many reasons, but one of the yeah. big ones is Star Wars is no longer exclusive to EA, EA so they've mm. got to work harder and they've got to make, you know, make games at, a, at a reasonable pace and quality and not try and nickel and dime us all the way through. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, the amount of stuff that I think of, the amount of, uh, I don't know, gasps of uh, relief that were had when the deal started to change hands. Obviously, uh, some of this stuff will still be under the EA banner overall, but the deal is up. There was all the stuff with Lucasfilm Games forming and the amount of different projects that then got off the ground. So I did um, write down the amount of Star Wars games that we'll be getting uh, going forward. It's worth throwing in here as well that Jason Schreier has said that as far as he's heard, Jedi Fallen Order 2 will be coming this year um, or next. So it seems like the announcement, uh, just to confirm this stuff was coming, uh, was more done Done because uh, the different dev teams want to try and acquire more talent. They want to put a bit of a hiring call out um, because of the amount of people that are switching jobs right now. Um, but it's but still, it's worth saying that Jedi Fallen Order 2 might actually be here by the end of this year. Overall, though, um, the amount of Star Wars stuff that's coming, um, you might have seen a trailer for Star Wars, uh, the Lego Skywalker Saga. That's coming up very soon. Um, there's Star Wars Eclipse, the Quantic Dream game. Um, there's the KOTOR remake by Aspire. There's Ubisoft Massive's uh, story-driven open world game. And there's Star Wars Hunters over on Switch. So it seems like we're getting more Star Wars games now uh, in this short period of time that we have across the entirety of the EA run. Yeah, it's almost uh, like we're going to return to the, the the very late 90s, early 2000s, where we mm. were getting Star Wars games hitting bam, 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 like it felt like every quarter, at least a couple of physical year at least. And mm. through all these different genres, so you, like, you know, you had Starfire, you had Bounty Hunter, you had some of the tie-in games for the films, and you had Empire at War over on PC, and, and before that, the other, the other sort of like tactics ones. And I'm so excited, and the idea of some former XCOV devs jumping onto a Star Wars mm. property, give me like Gears Tactics was such a nice jump into the tactics realm a few years ago when it came out, and we've sort mm. of been simmering a bit as like. I don't know, people might not have found that genre of fun actually viable. We're jumping back into it this year with the um, the Marvel one of them. The uh, I can't remember what that, that's called exactly. Midnight Bad on me. Suns? Midnight Suns. So yeah, yeah, just get some Star Wars tactics in that sort of way. It's so exciting. But also at the same time, when was the last time we had a dedicated Star Wars FPS? Like, it was like, to the, like just so ready for like, us to jump in that wasn't like a battlefront, you know? Well, I mean, that's kind of the thing that I hope comes from the amount of different projects getting greenlit. It's just a wider variety of Star Wars things overall. Um, like I said, me and you grew up around the time when the Star Wars IP was applied to so many other things. I grew yeah. up on X-Wing versus TIE Fighter and everything like that. So it's like, yeah, I would want a, a wider variety of stuff. Give me a full-on pod racing game or something if I'm just going to go hog wild and do whatever. Um, one thing that you mentioned when this news broke, though, which is a very valid point, is that it seems like Titanfall 3 is absolutely dead and gone. And when I, I mean, you know, they keep hovering around the idea of potentially doing more Titanfall but it just seems like well, that's just not coming if the entirety of Respawn are now doing two more Star Wars games Jedi Fallen Order one more and they're publishing the other one I don't think there's many resources left to do anything with Titanfall anymore yeah I at the end of the day it's probably the better finance option and like I enjoy mm. I didn't play Titanfall 1 I enjoyed the campaign <laughs> of Titanfall 2 and obviously I, I've I, I'm on Twitter. I've seen people tell me how Titanfall is. You've told me how Titanfall 2 online is great. I think the Jeff best Ger first person shooter Jeffrey ever made. Gersman as well. But like, I feel like what they do <laughs> at this point now is turn it into a skate situation. Let Titanfall 3 or Titanfall whatever they will call it sleep for a while, get these Star Wars games out of the way, and see where we are next, you know? And 
it's like I'm fantasizing maybe they can bring back the dark forces in some way or sort of like rejigger that about Ooh. from what was essentially uh, it came out in the year of like Doom clones and Quake clones as we're sort of coming out of uh, <laughs> the FPS sort of primordial, primordial ooze and see what we can do mm -hmm. now with a more sort of like focused and you could even throw lightsabers in it like uh, Jedi Outcast, Jedi Academy and get some fun going in there but I would be happy with just having some shooty shoot time in Star Wars. <laughs> That's kind of the thing that you talk about like legacy, you know, first person shooters in the Star Wars space. Like I mean, there's kind of the Jedi uh, Academy games. You could play them in first person, um, which I know is like a continuation of Dark Forces stuff, but it's that time period. It's that sort of arena shooter feel um, that has obviously gone out the way or out the, um, you know, over time it's been replaced by the likes of Call of Duty, Halo, more campaign set piece stuff. Um, arena shooters just haven't really had their day in the sun, but I, I wonder what like old school identity they channel for a Star Wars FPS, like whether you make it more pick up and play arcade or whether because it's respawn and they're slowly making a name for themselves as story driven stuff whether it, whether it is something more like that you follow maybe they resurrect Cal Catan and do all that stuff all over again <sighs> don't do it to me because I don't think <laughs> I think these have all got to be in canon unfortunately mm. Um, he could be in canon, right? He's not been killed. Or maybe yeah, he has. but what, Carl Katarn stole the Death Star plans in those games, and Carl Katarn <laughs> survived Return of the Jedi, and him and Luke Skywalker mm. were in the Jedi Temple on Yavin 4 and all that. So, you know, there's all that. I mean, I would love it. Bring it back. I would, I would, I would, like the, the original, I was watching a, um, a retrospective on the Dark Forces and Jedi Outcast games last night, and the guy who mm. originally played Carl Katarn uh, kicked acting, and he, did, he liked acting, but he went off to make wine in a vineyard so he's still alive out there so bring it back as, a, <laughs> as some sort of granddad but also when you think of all these Star Wars games and I, I hearken back to Dark Forces one more time mm -hmm. the Dark Troopers came from that and the Dark Troopers uh, came into oh, yeah. um, spoilers for the Mandalorian they came into yes. Mandalorian season two. So mm -hmm. that we're starting to blend things back in there. And there's obviously the creative heads of the series is series series are like sort of bringing things in and out and we are recanonizing stuff. Mm -hmm. And also you've got to think about things like um, Thrawn is yet to be utilized in games as well. We don't know what era these games are taking place in as well. So there are so many characters and aspects around everything that could be exciting danny mm -hmm. um danny trejo popped up in uh the the uh book of offer the other day had the danny trejo simulator where you look after a little rank or why not let's go <laughs> <laughs> i would take the um because i think he's is he part of the bike gang that's doing the rounds of boba fett because i've seen it, that he's it's a thing he's like literally he's like he's not janitor but he he's just looking after his new baby rank or okay. and he's teaching him the ways of how to basically a dog trainer Right, because thing I was going to say is like obviously they're trying new stuff. I saw the screenshot. I haven't been keeping up with Boba Fett, but I've seen the screenshots of the little Vespa gang doing the rounds, and I kind of wonder like what time period they pick. Like I mean, because you know Star Wars timelines better than I do. Do you have any particular thing you would like want them to place a first person shooter in? Does it feel like there's something that they should do, or is it just like they should go back into the the well, let's say, and bring something back in from old school? It's sweet because like I would love the, the time period between the Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones is like mm. a time that's deep in my childhood heart and that's like you've got over a decade to play with there. We've gone into the well of episode four, uh, three to four quite a lot now. Mm. But I mean like you could always jump in there and go to different planets because at the end of the day it's a Star Wars game and we can't ever break away from a certain... We've got to go Tatooine. <laughs> if you're going to go to Tatooine then we're just doing nothing. And, and again Dash Rendal, you could do something like that, bring new characters back or just start new characters like um, Carl Kestas even though he was a bit sort of more milk toast boring for me but I would say <laughs> go like maybe they might do one of these might be High Republic right because we don't know mm. there's there's obviously more Styles games in the mix around other companies but I guess a High Republic uh, what I would do a High Republic I would do one in between episode one and two that 10 year mm -hmm. period and then one in between three and four as like say a rogue give it a rogue one-ish feel you know what I mean it's, have fun with it. Well, it's interesting because obviously the movies going forward are going to be all super old school. It's like young Yoda or whatever. They're just trying to get away from where things were in the last few movies. So they're going to be setting away in the past. So you have that potential time period. But like you said, um, there is that whole, you know, the, between episode one and two or between two and three. And um, before, like when it's, it feels a bit cleaner and more high tech and it's before everything fell and it was like the height of certain technologies and spaceships and different designs that would go completely by the wayside in the later movies that I wonder if that's the thing that they double down on. I feel like um, Battlefront 2 kind of 
proved that there is a really hungry audience for that time period. And once yes. they started doing the DLC and the add-ons, um, that was one of the many things that resurrected that game and helped it become one of the best Star Wars games ever. So I hope it's not another, you know, dust, sandy, worn out version of Star Wars. And maybe they could do something feel a bit fresher, whether or not it is um, High Republic stuff or whether it is something more like the prequels that we haven't seen yet. Um, but let's know what you think down in the comments below. You've got Jedi Fallen Order sequel, you've got a first person shooter game, whatever the hell that's going to be, and some sort of XCOM strategy thing too. For now though, I've been Scott from whatculture.com. Hashtag bring back Carl Katarn. <laughs> and we'll catch you next time. Bye bye. May the force be with you, I guess. <laughs>